How's it going, Eliminators? Today, I'm gonna to be showing you why you should just replace the carburetor on your two-stroke weed trimmer instead of cleaning and rebuilding them. So let's get right into it. So today we're going to be working on a weed eater and the model is a Featherlight XT260. I recently had a customer that brought in three of these and he said, if you can fix one of them up, I'll let you keep the other two. Uh, this is one of the other two that I am fixing up. Now on this particular trimmer, it doesn't have fuel lines. That's most likely because they dried up, got hard and cracked, and they probably fell off. And I wouldn't doubt if there was a piece of fuel line somewhere in the fuel tank as well. But just to start off, these things are super easy to work on. There's going to be an air filter cover. There's going to be normally a foam air filter. You guys can see this one's falling apart, so we will end up replacing that one. But uh, usually, as long as they're not falling apart like this one, it got all dry and nasty inside of there. Uh, you can just rinse these out in the kitchen sink with a little bit of uh, maybe Dawn dish soap. It'll help break up a lot of the two-stroke oil that's there. And uh, you can dry it out and just reuse the same filter. But for the most part, these trimmers are going to have two Torx or hex screws. And those two screws go back into the engine block. And once you remove these two screws, you can go ahead and remove the whole carburetor. So... There's nothing really holding this on except it's probably just stuck to the old gasket because this thing hasn't been off in so long. You have a little throttle cable with just a Z-Bend connector that pops right off and that's it. Your carburetor is off. Now, getting to the point of this video, a carb kit for this is going to run the average consumer anywhere from 10 to $15. An entire carburetor shipped from Amazon, so it's coming from China, but a lot of times, and in my case, they have these carburetors sitting in a warehouse in Mississauga. You order one of these on Amazon and you can get it shipped with prime free two day shipping, and sometimes it'll even come in the next day. And I'll put up the picture of the product that I bought. You guys can see it comes with a carburetor, two new gaskets, fuel line, and a fuel filter for about 20 to $21. Again, I'm buying that and it's being delivered the very next day. So for me to go ahead and spend $15 on a carb kit, I'm then gonna have to disassemble the whole carb and I'm gonna have to ultrasonic clean it. And by the time that's all said and done, I end up spending probably an hour cleaning and rebuilding the carburetor. And then it's gonna go back onto the unit and I'm going to have to adjust or fine tune it with my carb adjustment tool once the carburetor is back onto the machine and it's warmed up. The new carburetor that you install, you're going to have to adjust anyways. So you're basically save an hour of your time and you don't have to go and fool around with a carb kit. That, I'd like to mention, may not end up solving your issue. So if you get one of these that are running poorly, you know, you clean and rebuild the carb, there's really no guarantee. And there's no guarantees with a China carb replacement either, but Amazon gives you a hassle-free 30-day return window. So in the event that you bolt on a new carburetor and it doesn't work properly, you can just simply return it and they'll send you a new one. And you go ahead and bolt that on and I guarantee the second one will work just fine. But now that the carb is off, I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that these little screws here are tight so that there's no air leak in between the engine block and this plastic heat spacer here. So I have a brand new carburetor here. This is what we're going to get in the kit. Again, carburetor, they give you some fuel line. Now we're gonna get to why you probably won't be able to use this fuel line unless you do a modification that I'm gonna show you. And the simple answer is this fuel line will fit in the thicker return line hole, but it won't fit into the standard fuel inlet hole. In a moment, I'm going to be taking a drill bit and we're going to make that hole the same size as this one so that we can use a thicker line. Now, this thicker line is going to last a lot longer than that real thin stuff that they use on weed eaters from the factory. And we might as well make use of this fuel line because it came in the kit. So again, you know, if you just try to rebuild the old carburetor, you're spending $15 just on a carb kit and you end up getting this one for $21. You get fuel line, you get the carb adjustment tool. So that's probably another five or $10, depending on if you didn't have one and you had to purchase one. You're gonna get a new fuel filter as well. You're gonna get a couple extra primer bulbs because remember, it comes with a primer bulb already on the carburetor. So you just get a couple spare ones and you get some gaskets as well. 
And sometimes you can even spend a little bit more money, maybe 26 or $28, and you'll get an air filter with it. But these foam air filters here are fairly cheap. You can buy them, or you could just cut them out of a piece of foam if you have one. Now, before we go ahead and start drilling holes into our fuel tank, the first thing we're gonna do is come over to our fuel line that you got with your carburetor. What we're gonna be checking for is to make sure that the fuel line fits tight on both the inlet, which it's hooked up to now, and the outlet. Now that's important because a lot of times these Amazon vendors are just going to take whatever fuel line they have in stock, they're gonna cut it to a few feet, they're gonna throw it into the box, and sometimes I've had the fuel line not fit the carburetor that they sent me. So you just wanna make sure that it forms a nice tight seal around both of the tubes, and in this case it does. So now we know that we can use this fuel line on that carburetor. The next thing you wanna do is establish which is your fuel inlet tube and which is your fuel return line. So basically you can just pump the primer bulb and put your finger over this top hole. Normally this is your return line and that is your inlet line. So now what we're gonna do is come up to this fuel line here and we're going to trim the fuel line on a 45 degree angle. So just using a pair of snips, we're gonna go ahead and cut the fuel line. Now cutting the fuel line on an angle like that will make it much easier to push into the return hole there in the fuel tank. And all you're gonna do is just push down and give it a little twist. But before we put the fuel line into the fuel tank, we want to drill this hole to the same size as this one here. So we're going to have to use this hole as a gauge to match up the drill bit that we need. Now I have in front of me a metric drill bit set. This has a whole bunch of metric drill bits in it. They're all different sizes. The one we're going to need, you can see a little bit of green paint on there, is an M17 and that correlates to a 0.173. And that is because this drill bit fits perfectly inside of that hole there. You can see that it's taking off just the slightest amount of material, which again, that fuel line fit fairly tight. So this drill bit is what I use to go ahead and drill the second hole. Now, when you're drilling this hole out, you just wanna make sure that you're fairly even on a 90 degree, and we're just gonna go in slowly. What you're not gonna wanna do is drill fast, and you're not going to want to tilt the drill bit to the left or to the right because that'll kind of waller out your hole and make it bigger than what you need for that fuel line to fit tight. That's it. That's all you need. So we now have two fuel line holes that are the same size. So now we can go ahead and start routing our fuel line through. Now, once you get the fuel line started, you should be able to see it poking out through the bottom of the fuel tank. Now, normally what I like to do is pull the fuel line all the way out of here so that I can cut it straight and then I pull it back to kind of fix my length inside of the tank there. And to do that, it's much easier if you have a pair of forceps. You don't need a big pair like this here, so we can just put those off to the side. And normally I just use the small pair here. You go in, grab the fuel line, and you pull down on the fuel line while you're pushing on the top. And it makes it super easy. That fuel line's gonna slide through that hole nicely. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. So something as simple as that, and then we're just gonna go ahead and pull up on the line to kind of get the length to about there should be good. Now here's something that not too many people mention. You notice how the natural bend of the fuel line is going towards the back, yet when our carburetor bolts up like that, the fuel lines are up at the top there. What I'm gonna do is take this fuel line and I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees so that the natural bend of the fuel line comes out and then rotates forward. So just give that line a little rotate and now I can go ahead and cut that line off right about there and then we have enough fuel line to go up to the carburetor and just like that, the fuel line has its natural bend that wants to go this way, so that line is not going to kink in that position. Now, you're always gonna wanna cut your line a little bit longer because we can always trim the line, but adding to the line is impossible. So just kinda hold the carb up to the machine, kinda gauge where you want that fuel line to be, and then you can give yourself a couple extra inches there and we'll cut it a little bit longer so that we can trim it up once we get the carb mounted. So we're going to be repeating the same steps for the fuel inlet line, and we're just going to simply push that one through. Now, once you pull your main fuel line in, 
simply cut that end off nice and flush and we'll go ahead and hook up our new fuel filter. And like I mentioned before, I prefer using this Chinese fuel line that they send with the carburetor because it's thicker. Like I said, it's going to last longer, but everything seems to just fit nice and tight and there's never any leaks with this line. I know that using the OEM thin line, it's very difficult to get that thin line over top of one of these fuel filters. So just using this line makes it so much easier. And like I said, all you need is that drill bit, push that line through, it'll fit nice and tight. And just a note on that topic real quick, if you think that the fitting is too tight on your fuel line, you can go ahead and blow into one end of your fuel line. And as long as air comes out the other end, then you should be okay. Because if air will flow, then that means fuel will flow as well. So you know that, you know, the connection isn't too tight where it's pinched off that fuel line. Now when we pull the fuel line back through the opening in the fuel tank, we ideally want enough length for the fuel filter to be sitting right about here. That will ensure that the engine is always getting fuel because it'll be in the lowest spot somewhere in the middle. Now before you go ahead and put your new fuel filter inside of your fuel tank, I would recommend having a look inside of your tank if there is some bugs or some gunk built up inside of there. Maybe you have old fuel I'd recommend now you go ahead and just rinse that tank out, which is what I have done just to make sure that it's all clean and free of debris. I just used some uh, old fuel to kind of swish it around in there and the tank is now clean. And once you get to a point where you think you're close, just go ahead and kind of force that fuel filter into the fuel tank there. So it may be difficult to see on the camera, but the fuel filter is laying on the bottom of the fuel tank and it's slightly to the right of middle, so that should be good. Now, even though they do include two new gaskets with the new carburetor, the gasket doesn't match up to the old one. So what we're gonna do is, because this is still in good condition, I'm gonna peel the gasket off of the old carburetor and put it onto the new one, and we'll go ahead and get it installed. So we can see that at least one of the gaskets lines up, and this is the one that goes in between the carburetor and the airbox. So this will make sure that uh, no debris is getting sucked in between your air filter that's supposed to filter the air. So you wanna be running this outside gasket here. So the first thing I've done is hooked up my throttle cable here. You can see that my screws are through the carburetor. All the gaskets are hooked up. And we just wanna make sure that when we put the carburetor on that the throttle cable here runs along the left side of that little plastic piece there. Don't worry about hooking up your fuel lines. We can do that last. What we're gonna do now is, again, just go down here and we're just gonna make sure that the throttle cable goes onto the inner side of that plastic piece there. We can now go ahead and tighten down our screws and you're gonna see how well this thing runs. Well, first of all, you're gonna see how poorly it runs because the carburetor is not adjusted. So, you know, again, using the tool that they provide, we're going to adjust the low and the high setting on this carburetor, and this thing's gonna wind right out at high RPM. So once you go ahead and get those screws tight, I'm just gonna take a piece of foam that I went ahead and cut just to get in there for the time being, because I don't have replacement air filters in stock. Although they only cost me $1.80 Canadian, I'm gonna order probably 10 of them and then I'll have them for future use. But like I said, any kind of foam will be good as long as it fits. So the air filter here is a little thicker, but that's okay because it just ends up squeezing in between these two pieces anyways. So as long as your sides are cut to the proper length, it should be good. We can now go ahead and hook up our fuel line and then just cut them to length. So ideally when I hook up my fuel lines, I try to get them so that they don't stick out too far off the back end there, but to enough length that you could always go ahead and pop them off. And if you ruin your edge here using a pair of needle nose pliers, then you can go ahead and cut it shorter and hook it back up again without having to replace the line. So that there is a pretty good length. So we're just gonna go ahead and try to match up the other fuel inlet line as best we can. So I'll go ahead and trim that line. So we have both new fuel lines installed. Again, they're routed so that the natural curve of things goes towards the carburetor. At this point, what I'll recommend is that you check to make sure that your gas cap vent works. So you want air to go into the tank, and that's because when this tank is filled with fuel, as the engine consumes the fuel, air needs to come into the tank to replace that volume. So you wanna make sure that your gas cap vent works, and you can do that simply by blowing on this piece right in there, just to make sure that air comes through on the other side. Now, before I put fuel in this trimmer and fire it up, I'm just using a three quarter inch socket to remove 
the factory spark plug here. Now for the $21 carb kit that I got, it did not include a spark plug. A lot of them do, some of them don't. It's really no big deal for me because I stock these plugs anyways. But I just wanted to note that the factory plug for a lot of these trimmers are going to be a six heat range. Now this plug here is a champion RCJ 6Y plug. So that's a six heat range. And a lot of times when you get these carb kits from Amazon and they come with a plug, they're going to come with an L7T spark plug. Now, the one thing that I want to note is with Champion, the higher the number on the spark plug, the hotter it runs. With NGK, the higher the number, the colder it runs. So for instance, in this case, a seven range spark plug is going to be hotter than a six range spark plug. A hotter plug is less likely to foul. Now, the only con about running a hotter plug is that it could cause your engine to knock. That's pre-detonation. So the combustion cycle is happening before the piston is reaching close to top dead center. And it's actually pushing your piston back down as the piston's coming back up because it pre-detonated. The way to prevent pre-detonation is by simply using a higher octane fuel. It burns at a higher temperature. So there's going to be a lot more time for that fuel to combust. That means that you can run a hotter plug and your engine won't knock and you'll have less of a chance of fouling the plug, which means you probably won't have to replace them as much. Now, I have said in previous videos that I run a 91 octane ethanol free fuel and I also run the K100S plus fuel stabilizer in it, which boosts it another two octane points for a total of 93 octane. So I'm going to be running, in this case, just one of these cheap torch L7 spark plugs that I've gapped to 30 thousandths of an inch. Now there's going to be two adjustment screws on your carburetor and the carburetor is mounted onto the machine like this. Now generally, I'm gonna say nine times out of 10, the adjustment screw that's closest to your engine is going to be your low speed adjuster and the adjustment screw farther away from your engine, so closer to the air filter out here, is going to be your high speed adjuster. What we're going to be doing is once the engine's warmed up, you're going to pull the throttle and run this at the highest RPM that you can, pretty much wide open throttle. At which point, if it's kind of bogging down, we're going to start to turn in, in a clockwise direction, the outside screw here. Now what that's going to do is it's going to lean out the fuel mixture. So we're going to be running less fuel when we turn that in. So what that's going to do is it's going to raise the RPM because less fuel in your mixture means more air and more oxygen in the combustion cycle means it's going to be running hotter and a higher RPM. So after you've adjusted your high end, we're going to go down to the low speed adjustment and we're going to start adjusting that one. Now, the farther out you adjust it, so counterclockwise is going to be richer and the farther in is going to be leaner. So if your idle is too high, you're going to want to open that one up by rotating it counterclockwise. If the idle is too low and it's really bogging out and you know not really idling all that good, you're going to want to start to turn it in. Now, once you've made those adjustments, and you'll see me doing it while the engine's running, what you're gonna look for is after you've been on wide open throttle, you're gonna let go of the throttle and see if the engine stays high revving for a short period of time and see if it takes a while for those revs to come down. If it does, then that means your low speed is set too lean. So you're gonna wanna open it up to richen it out a bit. If your weed trimmer or your chainsaw starts to bog down as soon as you let off of that throttle very quickly, then that probably means that your low speed is set too rich and you can go ahead and tighten that one up just by rotating it again in the clockwise direction to lean out that mixture. So I'll take this trimmer outside, we'll fire it up, see how it runs with the factory China settings, and then I'll go ahead and make the adjustments with the spline tool that they provided in the kit and we'll see how it runs after the adjustments have been made. Okay, so first things first, we're going to start priming the bulb. Make sure we bring some fuel into the carburetor because it was completely dry. We'll go ahead and put this onto the full choke position. Now we'll probably have to pull it a couple times to get the fuel through it and it should start and then shut off. And then we'll go ahead, put it on a half choke, see if we can get it to run there. And once it gets warm, we should be able to just run it on the run setting. Okay, that was full choke. We'll go to half choke now.
Okay, so that just shut off when I let go of the throttle. The high speed is probably too rich, so we're gonna go ahead and tighten that odor adjustment screw. full throttle it's also still kind of bogging and kind of sputtering so we're going to turn that one in a little bit more as well and try to lean that mixture out but now we're going to have to adjust that low speed because it's still shutting off when i let go of the throttle so i'm just adjusting the idle here and i want you to see what happens when i go wide open throttle. The idle screw is actually backing itself out just due to the amount of vibration. So when I was adjusting my low and high speed, I didn't even notice that the idle screw backed itself all the way off. So I'm probably going to put a little bit of thread locker on that screw here. That's simple enough. And that should kind of give it a little bit of resistance. So what I'll do is I'll set the idle to where I think it should be. And if I have to redo my little air fuel mixture high low settings there then i can go ahead and do that but it's pretty much running to the point where i want now i just have to set the low rpm idle so i guess that's one of the little issues you run into when using a china carburetor so i'm just back in the shop now and i just wanted to show you guys that what i was talking about here check this out the throttle plate isn't even hitting the idle screw so no wonder why it was shutting off because that's pretty much as low as an rpm as you can get so ideally you want this to be threaded in a bit but See how loose that is? Like normally that shouldn't come out by hand. Now what they normally do is take a press and they put a divot on this little piece and that just keeps a little bit of pressure against the threads. It's almost like how a lock nut works. But like I said, I'll just use a little bit of thread locker or maybe even some Teflon tape or something like that just to give the threads a little bit more resistance so that it doesn't back out at high RPM. Okay, so I've chosen to use a little bit of Permatex Red Thread Locker. You use this when you pretty much don't want anything to thread out. So I've put that on the threads there and I'm gonna let that cure. And I've just got it to the point where the tapered tip is just touching the throttle plate there. So I'll let that cure and that should give me the resistance that I need. However, the adjustability still, because it won't completely weld it in place, that's just going to act as like a glue that'll kind of hold that and prevent it from backing itself out. And then, like I said, if I need to make a fine adjustment, I can go in a half turn or go out a half a turn. Okay, so now that I've made that adjustment, I'll fire it up, see how it runs now. <laughs> go guys so a little bit of thread locker to prevent that idle screw from backing off and it idles now it doesn't shut off when i let go of the throttle i readjusted my high and my low maybe a 16th of a turn on the high and an eighth of a turn on the low and this thing's running absolutely awesome now it winds right out it idles perfectly so this thing's ready to go up for sale so once again, that is why I recommend replacing the carburetor on one of these weed trimmers. It's so simple to work on them. Two screws, you pop the old carb off, pop the new one on. Fuel lines, like I said, you wanna be running those thicker fuel lines. They're gonna last a lot longer. All you gotta do is drill out that hole a little bit bigger. I showed you which drill bit to use. I ended up cutting an air filter. So if you had like a kitchen sponge or something like that, you could even use that for the time being before you get one you know they sell them for like a dollar fifty on amazon but they come from china and it probably takes a month or two months to get here so like i said for the time being i just cut that piece of foam and it fit perfectly and again with the spark plug i used one heat range higher with the high octane premium fuel this thing does not have any pre-detonation no knock this thing winds right out it runs awesome and all i had to do was adjust it with the tool that they provided me with in the kit and again, if you buy you know, a kit that's a little bit more expensive, maybe 26 or $28, you'll probably get an air filter and a spark plug included as well. 
So that's gonna wrap up today's video, guys. Like I said, super simple to just go ahead and replace that carb instead of buying the rebuild kit for like $15. So you're only really saving five or $6. Then I'm using my ultrasonic cleaning solution. I'm spending all that time to rebuild the cleaned carburetor. And then you're probably gonna have to adjust it anyways once you get it back onto the machine. And now you're buying fuel line and a fuel filter separately when you can just go ahead and get all of that in the kit from Amazon or eBay, wherever it is you guys are purchasing that stuff from. So like I said, go ahead and just replace your carburetor. It's super simple. You saw the results here and the thing runs awesome. And I sell those things for like $75. So I get them for free. I got a shed full of them. I go ahead and spend 21 or $22 on a carb kit with all the stuff, spend like 15, 20 minutes fixing it. Customers are happy. They get a quick $75 trimmer that they can use for a couple seasons. And when the carb gums up the next year, go ahead and replace the carb again, guys. It's that simple. But that's it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed it, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week. So be sure to stop on by next week, check channel out for new content. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.